and all that. It shows that economics are not primary in the mentality and thinking process or plans and activities of politicians. So the politicians right. are the biggest problems that we have in terms of the economic development of this country. I'm now, if you would recall, the president had said that um, he was going to ensure a unified uh, budgeting system. But three years after, we are not seeing that. Do you see that unified budgeting system being achieved in the, la in the final year, even as we go into the election year? Yeah, but that's, really, that's part of the problem. A unified budgeting system, and then we've had a budget that has been delayed up to this point. So now we will now look at, okay, when the budget is going to be implemented, when the plans based on the economic recovery and growth plan can actually start to, to hit the ground, okay? And then part of the sadness that I have is that we have already entered a, a, a year, the year before our political uh, electionary activities. And you can see the entire air is um, vibrant with political songs and all that. Politicians are thinking politics all over the time. So you can see that um, achieving that unification of the budget process is very difficult because, first of all, um, budget, the budget certainly cannot be fully implemented this year. So it's, it's, it's key merits. Its key strategic plans are already shut down because of the delay. And then, of course, right now, even the 2017 budget is still running, for instance, and a number of, a number of implementation uh, milestones have not even been reached. So, so when we, we divorce politics from the budget process, we would have actually put ourselves on a platform to start to do things right. So this is part of a challenge. So I don't think that aspiration can be achieved in the way we, we, are, we are working. Okay, let's just hope that um, the National Assembly, of course, passes the budget uh, as they promised April 24. Now, how do you think the government can actually improve revenue generation to fulfill the projections on, on the budget? And, of course, in turn, no, the no. economic recovery and growth plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you can see, for instance, that the economic recovery and growth plan of the federal government um, part of much of the revenue, revenue aspect is actually predicated on non-oil non revenue generation, meaning, therefore, that it, there, will not, there will be less dependence of crude oil receipts. Now, uh, one of the strategies, and I commend that, one of the strategies is actually expanding the tax bracket, whereby the federal government has come up with the voluntary asset and income declaration uh, scheme, which is a form of a tax amnesty to enable, um, to, to ensure that you know, parties that have always evaded uh, tax, taxes companies and high net worth individuals will, will be captured in. And I'm made to understand that by the end of this month, uh, that amnesty window will be over, and the Minister for Finance had said um, that um, the projection, that is the expectation in terms of revenue, revenue generation from that will be about $1 billion. Even though, yeah, it just, um, by, by now, it is just, we're just achieving about $17 billion, or is it $35 billion? I can't, I can't precisely uh, say it in narrow now, okay? So now, that is a very important window because it, it works in line with, with the direction that the world is going, go, going. You observe that, for instance, we have the uh, OECD, the um, Organization for Economic uh, Cooperation and Development, which has come up with um, the, uh, the Access to Information uh, Initiative, where there's collaboration in terms of information sharing um, across uh, um, between countries to see that people that, are, uh, uh, that have their assets and their assets across the world, can, the assets can be reviewed. There will be more transparency. And with that collaboration, with that cooperation, you can see that we can achieve more. For instance, that, ta that form of tax um, amnesty has also been tried in other shores. Um, Indonesia did that sometime last year, and um, they were able to generate revenues way beyond what they initially expected from their tax um, amnesty. Um, it was also tried by uh, Malaysia some time ago, and they also experienced quite some improvement in their revenue generation vis-a-vis -vis taxation. And then sometime in 1997 in India, uh, the then Indian president came up with what he called, what they called the dream budget. And much of it, he looked at the possibility of extending uh, uh, tax, um, tax receipts 
you know, and all that. And there was so much that was achieved. And again, in 2016, India has put up some tax amnesty program again. So the federal government's strategy under the Federal Ministry of um, Finance for, for the tax amnesty is a fundamental and a very, very interesting strategy that if it is well uh, put together and then pursued. It may not end now. Yes, I mean, the tax amnesty okay, is ending by 2000, I mean, by the 30th of this month, yeah. But, but they can actually fully institutionalize it and ensure that more and more of it is achieved. For instance, the minister said something, and that's very interesting, that a Nigerian, a high net worth individual who has assets abroad, houses abroad, has luxurious cars, has. Um, uh, his children have schooling abroad and all that, and then in a period of five years has only paid tax of five million. So you can see for such persons, and we, are, we have thousands of such cases. So okay. the, 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 the strategy will be to capture all of these um, tax evading entities, be they you know, individuals or corporates. So as they are brought in, it will certainly help in, in you know, achieving the revenue generation out of oil. Now, the another aspect which, um, which is also very important is um, revenue generation through the MDAs, uh, the, gov the, re the revenue generating uh, agencies, the state-owned, the government-owned entities. We call them GOEs. Okay. Now, if you look at the president's statement when he was presenting the budget in, uh, in, in, in November, he completely decried... The, the challenge regarding the fact that a number of revenue generating government agencies we are not remitting. Now, that remittance, that shortfall in remittance, is a big challenge to budget implementation because the expected re revenue that's meant to come in to, to, to make it happen okay. will, will not come in. So I, I propose strongly that it's very strong, of course, in the ERP, and then the, in ERP it was articulated that this would be better monitored. But then we can put this monitoring plan, can crystallize right. into a solid process All whereby right. government owned. Um, agencies, government uh, MDAs, and all that that all are right. revenue generating can actually be be be, be put to account. As the okay. boards okay, and the CEOs Abby. are working, they should give account to to the government. All right, Dr. Abi, thank you very much. I'm sure we have quite a lot to talk about um, at the budget, but let's just hope that uh, come April 24, uh, as the National Assembly has promised, the budget will be passed. Thank you for your time. We we'll take a quick break, and uh, when we return, Federal Inland Revenue Service throws more light on Nigeria's tax system. To stay with us.